Damn it, Byleth, you got the video delayed. Hey all, I'm P. Jiggles, and this is the final part of a series where I go over every character's worst move. Since the last episode, patch 7.0.0 came out, which not only came with a new character, but it also came with balance changes. Before we continue on with the list, I gotta go over 4 characters which I've already gone over that had their worst moves altered. We'll do this kinda quickly because this is gonna be a very long video, and I don't wanna stretch it out any further than I already have to. Zelda got her forward tilt buffed. It's now way stronger at killing, whereas it previously killed at around 123%, it now kills at around 98%. Dr. Mario got his down tilt buffed. It now actually combos from far away because it causes more hit stun. Its combo window is also way bigger, and he can even combo into up special at certain percentages. Young Link got his Zare buffed. It now comes out faster, and the launch angle is lower, which makes it better for combos. He can now combo into much more than just dash attack, like a dash grab or a forward air for example. And finally, Toon Link got his down smash buffed. It's now actually stronger than grounded spin attack. The first hit now kills at 124% instead of 137, and the second hit kills at around 112% instead of 123%. Also, though it wasn't his worst move, his back carry is now one frame faster to match the swing effect of the sword. Previously, the sword went through the opponent for one frame, and then hits on the next frame. This was in the game for over a year, and it didn't get fixed until I pointed it out, so I'm not trying to claim this all got fixed because of me. I'm just saying, you're welcome, Toon Link mains. Anyways, me flexing aside, let's get back to the list of worst moves. Just like last time, I really recommend you watch the first part of this series before this video, because I go over all the rules and such for this list in there. But in case you have watched it and you need a quick reminder of it all, I ask all the character discords what they think their character's worst move is instead of guessing it myself, and I'm not counting grabs, throws, pummels, or getup attacks. I showcase almost everything against Mario because he's in the middle of the weight skill, so he'd give the most average kill and combo percents among the cast. And worst move does not always mean useless move. Please keep this in mind because it's very important. I'm not saying every move I mention in this video is useless, only some of them are. Well with that all aside, let's finally continue. We ended last video with Rosalina and Luma, so we're gonna start with Little Mac this time. For Little Mac, you already know it's gonna be one of his aerials, huge surprise, they're all garbage. So because of that we're gonna do something special, we're naming his worst aerial and his worst non-aerial move, how exciting. The worst move in his entire moveset would be his back air. It's the slowest out of all his aerials, which is the case for a lot of characters because back airs usually have a lot of kill power. This is also the case for Little Mac. I mean, this move kills Mario here as soon as 219%, yeah, never mind. This move is so slow that if you do two back airs offstage after a full hop, you can just barely make it back if you time everything perfectly. If not, you're dead. I mean, even up air with its amazing hitbox can lead to some sick combos. Maybe not. Okay, so his worst aerial is back air, but what about his worst ground move? It was actually kind of hard to figure out, since basically all of his ground moves are pretty good. However, after discussing it with the Little Mac Discord, we were able to agree that his up tilt is his worst grounded move. At early percents, it's negative on hit, meaning the opponent can hit you before moving again. It can combo into up special, but not at early percentages or at percentages where it would actually kill, and it's also a little DIable, making it even harder to combo with it. It's really only good against big body heavies, since it more easily combos, but Little Mac usually does pretty well against those characters, so it's still not great. Moving on to Greninja, his worst move is Shadow Sneak. This move is meant to be a gimmick and you know it, a cool ninja move. Anyways, it's very slow and reactable, because of the shadow on the ground literally telling your opponent where you're gonna go. Unless you're playing on the Dreamland GB stage, because it actually doesn't show up there. Probably because of an oversight, but if you ask me, this is how the move should have been by default, but I digress. This move does basically no shield damage, so if your opponent sees the shadow coming for them, they can just shield it and then punish you for free because you'll be right in their face. It's pretty strong, so it can kill, but Greninja has no shortage of strong kill confirms, so you shouldn't really rely on side special for taking stocks. One positive I want to give this move is that I'm pretty sure it's the only move in the game outside of up specials, grabs, and up smashes that can be used while shielding. However, if you hold side special, Greninja will drop his shield. Next up is not Pelotena, but instead me Brawler. 
because in the first part I for some reason said that we're doing this in order of character fighter numbers. Anyways, for the Mies I'm counting all the custom special moves they have. For me Brawler, his worst move is Exploding Sidekick, aka his version of Falcon Punch. Remember everything I said about Falcon Punch being bad? Yeah, just apply all that to this move, as it's basically the same but with super armor and it's a little bit faster. Although the super armor frames are tiny. Forward Smash is super strong so it's better for reads and such, and also has way less startup. Flashing Mach Punch is a much better pick for his neutral special. Me Sword Fighter's worst move is Gale Stab, one of his side specials. Its only use is using it as an aerial burst option, even though it does put you in freefall, whether you hit with it or not. If you hit with this, Mii Sword Fighter will keep his momentum but he won't be able to grab ledges for a short while, which means you can let yourself get hit if he tries to use it to recover. Even fully charged, it only does 22 damage, which you can match with even a simple combo. And it's only kinda good at killing if it's fully charged, which you're of course not gonna land as often. Chakram is a way better side special, which can also combo into Power Thrust, which is a move similar to Gill Stab, but better. Me Gunner's worst move is Down Air. Yeah, not a special this time. It's slow, laggy, it can spike, but its sweet spot is really hard to hit because of Me Gunner's terrible aerial momentum, and the sour spot sucks. Since Me Gunner has bad air momentum, you might want to use this move to try to get a safe landing, right? However, it's much better to use forward air to reposition yourself before landing, or use neutral air as a landing hitbox. Alright, now we're gonna do Pelotain up. That's in, in the video. Yeah. Her worst move is neutral tilt. It's kinda slow. I say kinda because it's frame 8, which for a neutral tilt, yeah, that's slow. Even Bowser's end tilt is faster. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I won't refer to all jabs in this video as neutral tilts. I'm sure there are a lot of angry comments already. I hope you weren't too... tilted. But yeah, even Bowser's big beefy jab is faster. Up tilt comes out just as fast, and dash attack comes out faster, but most importantly, standing grab comes out of frame faster. And in case you don't know, Pelotena's grab range is really, really stupid. She's basically like Melee Marth in that aspect. Rapid jab can kill at ledge, but so can forward tilt, and a lot sooner at that. For Pac-Man, it's down tilt, with a very funky looking hitbox visualization. Again, not a bad move, but yeah, you know. It comes out fast and has decent range, which is nice, but it doesn't combo and it definitely doesn't kill, so it's mainly a get off me tool. Forward air can also be a good get off me tool, being only one frame slower from the ground and one frame faster in terms of end lag. Keep in mind that Pac-Man is definitely able to keep opponents at a distance, so if you're really playing to Pac-Man's strengths, you shouldn't have to use a get off me tool, though that's of course hard to expect from someone. Down tilt can't really shield poke, while forward air is pretty good at that. So in short, it's just a little outclassed. But again, not a bad move. Basically, every sword move that Robin has is garbage. Lucky for Robin, his sword moves get powered up if he has his Levin sword. In which case they do good damage, crazy knockback, eat shields, and have bigger hitboxes. But what if he had a sword move that's always with his bronze sword? Well, unlucky for Robin, those moves exist and it's all his tilts, which don't have a Levin sword variation. Robin basically doesn't have tilts, because all of them suck. However, the worst of his tilts would definitely be his forward tilt. This move has so much knockback at low percent that it'll never combo into anything ever, but at the same time, it also doesn't have any kill potential either. Keep in mind that the Levin sword kills super early. One niche this move has is that it sends characters into tumble at very low percents, meaning that it can get you a tech situation. However, if the opponent tech rolls away, the only true follow-up he has is Thoron because of his bad mobility, and this is assuming he has Thoron charged up while landing a forward tilt at around 4%. And that's not even mentioning the fact that around only 30%, the opponent will have enough time to be able to jump out by buffering a jump. For Shulk, it's his jab. I personally consider Shulk's Monado Art to be the best move in the game. Even if you disagree, you gotta at least agree that it's up there. This is very fitting because Shulk's Jab is one of the worst moves in the game. So I guess it's only fair, right? The full combo's damage output is very weak. Even in Buster mode, it'll do less than one down tilt. It also can't combo, even in Buster. Its kill power is also not great. 
Even in Smash mode, it doesn't kill at 130%. Now, 130% might seem okay to some, but in Smash mode, that's absolutely pathetic. However, its biggest issue is by far its hitbox. Good god is it bad. It's also very unsafe on shields. It's Shulk's fastest move, but that doesn't really matter with a hitbox that bad because all of Shulk's other moves have an insane hitbox. Bowser Jr.'s worst move has his balls hanging low. Cannon, the balls hanging low. There, it's down smash. It has a lot of ending lag, even for a smash attack. It's only active for 3 frames, and it doesn't have a shockwave hitbox, like you might expect. Its kill power is not particularly great. Forward Smash is quite a bit stronger, and has a little less lag, all at the cost of a tiny bit of startup time. For Duck Hunt Duo, it's down air. It's slow, pretty damn weak for a spike, and if you're moving just a little bit too much while using it, only the first hit will connect. Side Special into down air can work, but it's very precise and not stronger than side special into back air, which is also easier to do. When I originally joined all character discords to ask what their character's worst move is, the Duck Hunt Duo discord told me it was multi-jab, because characters can almost always shield before getting hit by the finisher hit, making this move practically useless. However, that was before patch 7.0.0, which fixed this issue. So I rejoined the Duck Hunt Duo Discord to ask if multi jab is still garbage, and if not, what his new worst move is, which turned out to be down air. Anyways, let's move on. So far, every Echo character had the same worst move as their non-Echo counterpart. I was expecting Ryu and Ken to have a different worst move, since they both have a lot of moves that the other Shoto doesn't have. But nope, they share the exact same worst move. And once I tell you what it is, I'm sure you won't be surprised. It is Jab 3. Specifically, Jab 3. In case you didn't immediately go, alright, that makes sense. Here's why it's their worst move. <laughs> Just do anything else. Ryu and Ken are both able to cancel most of their normal attacks into special attacks, including Jab 2. Meaning that if you ever land Jab 1, instead of finishing the full combo, you can do Jab, Jab, whatever does the most damage or will kill. And yes, everything I said is of course also applicable to Mr. Masters. Even if you're playing casual matches and you got a final smash at the ready, just jab, jab, press B. It works. Also a quick side note, while I was writing the script, I kept flip-flopping between writing Ryu and Ken, and Ken and Ryu, because I couldn't decide what sounds better. So I made a poll on Twitter asking what sounds better, and I can now officially say that I hate the internet. Anyways, for Cloud, his worst move is jab. It's not bad, but Cloud has stronger moves in front of him, like Climb Hazard and Cross Slash, which both have more range and do more damage, especially Cross Slash if you have limit. Down Tilt also crosses up shields at close range. One more thing, Jab can also miss Jab Lock sometimes because it hits pretty high. For Corrin, it's his awkward looking down smash. The front hit's kill power is very lacking, but the tipper of the back hit is a bit more powerful. But only the sweet spot is strong, the sour spot is even weaker than the front hit. And then again, the sweet spot of his forward smash is much stronger, which also has way more range, even being able to hit characters hanging on the ledge. I guess you could use it if you're not sure what side of you the opponent will land, but instead of doing that, you could also just catch their landing with the long range of up air or up tilt. For the dominatrix that ruined the Smash 4 competitive scene, it's her forward tilt. It's just not very remarkable at all. Its damage output is pretty alright, but it's not more than jab, which is also faster and safer. It doesn't combo and it also doesn't kill. You're usually better off going for down tilt, which is also faster and sets up for combos better. Again, forward tilt isn't horrible, but there's just plenty of moves that do its job better. And now we're finally at the ultimate newcomers, starting of course with Inkling, whose worst move is up tilt. You probably already know this, but Inkling's aerials are amazing. Up air is combos and kills, forward air is super strong in combos, back air is really stupid, down air isn't great but it spikes, and nair is very fast with good range. All of these moves can of course be done out of a short hop, and most of them heavily outshine up tilt, such as neutral air, back air, and up air. Neutral air is a way better anti-air, because it even hits a little bit above Inkling's legs. The only true combo I was able to find was its back hit into up air at very specific percents, but you can DI that. 
And then again, you may not want to use up air to rack up damage with combos because it's one of Inkling's best kill moves, and you don't want to stale it. I was told that the only time Inkling mains use up tilt is when they miss input up smash, which I thought was pretty funny. For Ridley, it's down air. First of all, look at that hitbox. This is easily one of the saddest hitboxes I've ever seen. I mean, look at how small the sweet spot is compared to the sour spot. Second off, yeah, it can spike, but only at the beginning as you just saw, and just barely. Wing Blitz aimed downwards, although it's a bit slower, has a way bigger hitbox, it spikes all the way throughout the move, it's stronger, and if you do it at the right spot, Ridley will grab the ledge after it. Back to down air. The landing lag is really bad, and although it's possible, it's slow and hard to make it back to the stage after using down air in a real match. I mean, it's easy in training mode, but not in the heat of battle. Alright, now we're getting into the good stuff. Or should I say bad stuff, because the next move I'm about to talk about is, without question, the single worst move in Smash Ultimate. There is no way it's not. You probably already guessed it by now, so there's no point in me trying to hide it anymore. It's Simon and Richter's Whip Dangle. Yes, even Rollout is better. Though not by much. This move is so bad that it doesn't even have an official name, and its hitbox isn't available online. Or at least I couldn't find it. Does this move kill? Hell no it doesn't. Is the damage output nice? Hell no it isn't. Does it combo? Hell no it does not. You're able to do this move out of forward tilt or jab by holding down the A button, but even then it doesn't combo. It can block weak projectiles, but it's not very good at it. You know what else you can do against weak projectiles? That's right, just shield it. Weak projectiles usually don't do much shield damage at all, so you can just shield them for free, instead of trying to be flashy and blocking them with the whip dangle. And when it comes to slightly stronger projectiles, this flaccid whip can't block them at all. Some of you youngins in the audience might not know why Simon and Richter have this move, but it's a reference to 1991's Super Castlevania 4 on the SNES, which actually released on Halloween, haha! <laughs> In that game, Simon Belmont was able to hold down the whip button and swing it around too, but then it was actually good because it had the same range as your current whip, and its hitbox was always active, whether you were swinging it or not. And now I'm obligated to talk about Sheik's Chain in Melee, because it was very similar. But that move had crazy range and could rack up insane damage, so it was actually kinda useful. But nobody used it because it was hard to set up for it and Sheik definitely didn't need it. Alright, let's calm down and talk about the croc. King K. Rule's worst move is his forward smash. Its hitbox leaves something to be desired, and it's only active for 2 frames, while being pretty laggy, so it's similar to Bowser Jr's down smash in that regard, although King K. Rule's forward smash comes out even slower. But its biggest problem is easily that down smash heavily outshines it. King K. Rule jumps over attacks, its shockwave hitbox reaches further than forward smash, it comes out only 3 frames slower, and it even has belly armor starting at frame 8. It's not even that much worse at killing. Even forward tilt outranges it, which is faster and can also kill, albeit quite a bit later. For Isabel, it's down tilt. It's mainly just outclassed by forward tilt, which has basically the exact same range, except at that point you'd hit the sour spot of down tilt, whereas forward tilt is strong throughout the entire hitbox. It's one frame faster and can kill around the same percent at the ledge as down tilt. Forward tilt also sets up for zoning, which down tilt does not because it sends up. You'd have to run away before trying to zone after down tilt, which isn't always good. It can kinda shield poke, but not super well. This would probably also be Villager's worst move if he didn't have his up tilt. Okay, next up is Incineroar, who is a very special case as none of his moves are bad. Now of course I've already covered plenty of other characters that don't have a bad move, but Incineroar goes even beyond that. The reason for this lies in his down special, Revenge. Every single move Incineroar has gets boosted by the effect of Revenge, except side special when you don't press the button again, but that'll also allow you to keep the charge. Bommel also doesn't use up Revenge, but that's also a good thing because it means you can still do a boosted throw afterwards. This means that every move he has can potentially deal massive damage and or knockback. Please keep all of this in mind for later. For now, just know that his least useful move is Jab. It lacks range, it doesn't kill, and characters will almost always fall out at the ledge at higher percent. Darkest Laird is usually a better option. Now, knowing all this, why is Jab not bad? 
Well, if Incineroar has Revenge and lands a jab, it boosts every single hit, and at full power revenge, Jab is a frame 5 move with little end lag that does 43 damage. 43 damage! Darkest Lariat also comes out on frame 5 and does more damage, but it leaves you open way more if you miss it, and in case you don't know, if you grab Incineroar, he loses revenge. Now hold on, you may be thinking, why isn't the filled version of Alolan Whip his worst move? That move is clearly useless! You're right, it's not good, but I'm not counting that because that's still a Lolan Whip. It's the same move as this. Which no sane person would call his worst move. Well, that was a lot to take in. But now that we're done with Incineroar, we're at the home stretch. We can finally talk about all the DLC characters that are released right now. Starting, of course, with good old Piranha Plant. Did you know that if you footstool Piranha Plant while he's crouching, he will bite you? Yeah! Isn't that cool? It's also his worst move! Outside of his unique footstool attack, Piranha Plant doesn't have a clear worst move. Because all of his moves are equally as ineffective. That's a joke. I know some of his moves are pretty good. Please don't flame me. Anyways, I was first a little hesitant to count this move because of its weird nature. But after going over it, I don't see why not. It's a move that he has. And it's really bad. Now, of course, the biggest problem is it relies on people footstooling you on the ground while you are crouching. So it's very much out of your control. But even if all the planets align and someone footstools you while crouching, it's not guaranteed to hit. Every single character can air dodge before they get hit. Even Bayonetta, who has the slowest air dodge in the game at frame 5. Now, this puts them all in a bad spot and susceptible to getting punished. However, characters can of course change how they air dodge to mix up Piranha Plant. But that's of course assuming this would ever happen while both players are expecting it. And even then, quite a few characters can do something better instead of air dodge, and sometimes that something completely destroys Piranha Plant. All of this info comes from a Google Doc made by iDonuts, who will be linked in the description along with his Google Doc, which you should definitely look at because it's one of the funniest things I've ever read. Okay, but why is this move better than Simon and Richter's Whip Dangle? Well, it kills at around 230%, which is something, I guess. Okay, well that's enough about the plant, let's move on to Joker. He's definitely another case where the character has no bad moves. But Joker's least useful move is Jab. Its best use is for jab locks, but jab locks aren't super good with Joker because most of the time if you're in a position where you can lock someone, it's because you hit them with a drag down first hit of forward air, in which case you can just forward smash without locking them. And if you want to lock, gun can do so too, although if you use gun you can only get down smash out of it because forward smash is too slow and up smash doesn't hit grounded opponents. And even then, if the opponent is at too high percent, gun will knock them back on their feet. So Jap would be better in that scenario. So yeah, say it with me because this is the last time we're hearing it in this series, not a bad move, but his worst for sure. Which means that every move from here on out sucks, including Hero's worst move. Now I know that you know that Hero's worst move is either Kerklang or Metal Slash, right? It's pretty damn obvious for sure that it's one of those two, but which one is worse? Definitely Kerklang. And that's because Kerklang gets you killed. Yeah. Now some of you might say, but it's hard to time my attack because the animation of him getting out of Kerklang isn't that long and it's hard to react to. Well, you're wrong. I'm gonna teach you how to consistently react to Hero leaving his metal stance in time. Sorry, Hero mains, just don't use Kerklang. If Hero uses Kerklang, wait about two seconds or something, then charge the smash attack. And now instead of trying to time it yourself when you think he will be vulnerable, stare at the metal hero and release the button as soon as he starts moving. If you always do it like this, it's incredibly easy. Just use your fastest smash attack because even if it's your weakest, it'll probably still kill because you get to completely charge it. Don't start charging your smash attack as soon as you can because 9 out of 10 times the smash attack will automatically release before hero gets unstuck from being metal but even then you can still sometimes grab him. Kuklang does have a pretty strong hitbox though while falling, but actually hitting this is nearly impossible. Not only do you have to be above your opponent, you also have to open the menu, hope you have Kuklang, read it fast enough, and select it. 
all while hoping your opponent doesn't move before that. Now why is Metal Slash better? It's certainly garbage, don't get me wrong. It's only useful in a hero diddle and if your opponent is stupid enough to use Kaklang. But if you get launched off stage and you're trying to get Zoom and you don't get it, the only way to cancel the menu in the air is to either double jump or air dodge, which you don't want to do because air dodges are super laggy. If you don't have a double jump and you didn't get Zoom, but you did get Metal Slash, you can use that to quickly get another shot at getting Zoom. There are other moves that can do this, like Flame Slash for example, but Metal Slash only costs 6 MP. Now this very specific situation is of course not enough to save Metal Slash from being terrible, but it's a way better use than anything Kaklan can do. Now you might think, oh but that doesn't count because since both Metal Slash and Kaklan are moves you get with Command Selection, you're saying all the moves from Command Selection suck, right? You said so when talking about the Miss Input version of Valolan Whip. Well, I don't really think that applies here, I just see command selection as a way to select many different moves that are also all completely different from each other. But if you do think it counts like that for some reason, then his worst move would be his dash attack. I'm not gonna go into detail why, because hero segment is already super long, just know that forward smash heavily outclasses it. For Banjo and Kazooie, it's down air. Not really surprising. If you want to use it off stage to spike or something, you have to do it pretty high up and use a tricky double jump grenade egg then catch the egg without using an aerial or air dodging, then using up special, explode and up special again to make it back to the stage. Which is of course very slow so it's easily punished if you miss, damages you and it's pretty hard to even pull off. And that's not even mentioning that the hitbox is tricky to land anyways, Banjo puts a full stop to his momentum and waits a bit before going down. The sweet spot doesn't last super long too, and the sour spot is really bad. The sour spot and sweet spot both deal the same amount of damage by the way, and there's no way you'd ever combo off of this move, so the sweet spot is really only for spiking, which we've already gone over, it's hard. It's only very niche use is escaping combos with it, but even then it's not great at it. For Terry, it's no surprise, it's Jap 3, just like with Ryu and Ken. Which is funny if you look at just the hitbox, cause at a first glance, it looks pretty good. But, I mean, how often have you seen this? And how often have you seen this? I'm sure you've seen the memes. Outside of Power Dunk, you could also use Rising Tackle. And yes, I mean the true version, which does more damage. To do the true version, you have to hold down for a little bit first. And you can actually do this during the first and second jab, and it'll still count. How cool would it be if his third jab was actually just his forward tilt? Uh, maybe not. Anyways, I don't think I need to go over it much more, just cancel jab 2 into anything else. And finally, we have Byleth. Isn't it funny that when I made part 1 and 2 of this, I didn't even know that I'd have to cover him too? Look, he wasn't even on the character select screen yet. I was originally going to name a few moves that could be his worst, since he's still new and it might have been too early to determine what his worst move is. But when I joined the Byleth Discord and asked, it was pretty obvious that there's already a clear winner, and that would be his down special, Amir. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you think about it, big strong slow moves like these are never good. Falcon Punch, Warlock Punch, and now Amir. Uh, did you need more information? Alright, it's slow, that's the main issue of course. Byleth can easily be grabbed out of it, or the attack can simply be dodged and then punished. If you use it while falling to the ledge, you actually get stuck on it for a little bit, which allows people to spike you for free. Just like Luigi's side special. Hey, remember that was his worst move too. What a coincidence. It does make for an anti-air though. A very bad one, but an anti-air nonetheless. And that's it. That is every single character's least useful move. Until some of them get inevitably buffed. Regardless, before we wrap it up, I gotta thank some people, and it's important so please don't leave yet. I wanna give a shout out again to every single Smash Ultimate Discord, and everyone that I talked with in said character discords. It would be a way too long list if I thanked them all individually, so you know who you are. Go get yourself some chocolate milk, you deserve it because you are epic. If you main a character and you want to meet more people that also main said character, you should absolutely look into joining that character's Discord server. However, if you do, 
please read the goddamn rules. Every server has them, and they exist for a reason. And if you don't follow them, you will get your ass banned. Thank you. I also need to give a massive thank you to ultimateframedata.com, which is where I got a lot of data from and those hitbox visualizations. Shoutouts to Metal Music Fan for making a website. You should follow him on Twitter. These videos would have been way harder and more time consuming to make without his help. And if you really want to show your support, you can donate to him, which helps him make and maintain the website. Tell him I sent you. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. I was originally gonna do this series in just one video. Then I noticed that that was way too long, so I made it two videos. Then I noticed that even that was way too long, so I made it in three videos. But even then, every individual video of this series is still super long. I guess this game just has way too many characters sometimes. And because of that, it took forever to make every individual part. Good thing I don't have to do it anymore, right? Right? I mean, it's not like there's something else specifically that I could name for every character that also has to do with a specific move. Right? <sighs> well, I guess that may or may not come eventually. But for now, we're gonna return to regular P. Jiggles videos for a while. So subscribe if you want to catch those. Tell me what you think the single worst move in Smash Ultimate is. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> Stay focused.